Hello, I'm Patrick Ryan from the Tennessee World Affairs Council, and today we are talking with Rory Odom from the National Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is part of the Japan America Society of Tennessee uh, Public Awareness Program on the impact of Japanese uh, business investment in the state of Tennessee. And we're talking with uh, Lori, who's the Senior Vice President for Economic Development and International Business at the National Area uh, Chamber, formerly the VP for uh, International, and she also holds the title of Director of the International Business Council at the National Area Chamber. Formerly at the Tennessee uh, Department of Economic and Community Development, where she was the lead on foreign direct investment. So you can find more biographical information uh, in the details uh, on this uh, recording. Hello, Valori, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Pat. Glad to be here. As uh, as you know, this uh, project is exploring the uh, the impact of Japanese uh, investment in Tennessee, and there's probably no better person to talk to uh, than you. You've held positions in uh, state government uh, on FDI, and, and you're currently uh, uh, immersed in uh, the business development and economic development uh, from the national area Chamber of Commerce uh, perspective, which is uh, probably more focused on Middle Tennessee, but you uh, you know what's uh, going on around the state, and uh, we will uh, dive into uh, what the impact uh, has been statewide. But uh, we understand the focus will be a little bit more on Middle Tennessee. So thanks uh, thanks for being with us today, and let me start by uh, just uh, asking a, a little bit about your background. How, how did you come to be involved? Uh, you were raised in Tennessee. Uh, but uh, you're now, uh, your, your vision is uh, abroad. You know, Pat, I am probably like most Tennesseans. So, you know, live here, work here, um, had had several jobs before getting into economic development, had friends that worked at Nissan, understood that was a great place to work, a, a good career, a good job, but didn't really understand that that was foreign direct investment. And that that had been really a huge role of so many of our governors and our commissioners of economic development. So I got into international work through my role in economic development, which is recruiting companies uh, to locate and operate in your state. So I worked under our Governor Bredesen and Commissioner Matt Kisper and focused on um, new companies into the state in the role of uh, plastics and um, poultry. Those were my two sectors. <laughs> and I think you've talked to uh, my mentor, John Gregory uh, and Lee Wylan. John at that time decided he was going to retire out of the economic development world and they were looking for someone to fill John's role. And I applied for that job and was lucky enough to be selected. And like I said, I had excellent mentors who helped me understand the value of foreign direct investment that helped me understand the relationship with Japan uh, and, and really helped to open my eyes to kind of the relationships that drive economic development and drive international business and how you maintain those relationships and continuity, consistency that, uh, you know, foreign direct investment and economic development in a lot of ways is a marriage. You know, you date to a certain point and then you, you decide you're going to solidify that union and you're going to locate into that state. And then you spend a lot of time nurturing that relationship. And if that relationship isn't nurtured, uh, those ancillary jobs don't always come. So um, that's kind of my role in economic development and international business is building relationships that result in that foreign direct investment and nurturing those relationships and promoting the Nashville region is a great place to do business. Well, we, we've certainly uh, heard the, uh, the R word relationships from talking with uh, John Gregory and uh, Emily Weiland, and uh, their their interviews are also in the series uh, on impact of the Japanese investment. So people can find those on the JAST YouTube channel as well. And they they provided a lot of background and context on the early days of the uh, Japanese uh, business uh, connections in Tennessee. Uh, give us just a, a sense of uh, you know the the middle years. Uh, you you came into uh, the process when. Uh, these companies, primarily automotive, were well-established, large companies, had a, a big footprint in Tennessee. But uh, tell us a little bit about your experience in the evolution 
of uh, Japanese businesses uh, in Tennessee. Where where they uh, they move from primarily automotive to to other sectors, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the impact in, in current times. But give us a, a snapshot of what you learned at the TNECD and uh, in your first uh, years at uh, the chamber. Sure, I, I think what's really stands out to me is I entered this world kind of in the early 2000s. So Nissan had been in operation for about 20 years. So there was a strong foundation in that automotive sector. Tennessee was well known and well regarded as an automotive state for Japanese investment. So we were already on the map in that area. But what's been fascinating for me to watch over the last kind of the next 20 years of how this all has evolved is seeing investments like NTT Data. So they're, you know, consulting technology based company, Japanese owned. I mean, they are a Japanese superstar brand. Everyone in Japan knows NTT Data. And to see them, you know, two stories above us here at the chamber with uh, an operation that services the United States in an industry completely outside of automotive, I think that's really been kind of, I think, one of those great capstone projects that kind of marks a turning point from things like automotive, supply chain. You know, we've seen clean energy, like in um, Memphis uh, several years ago, there was a Mitsubishi um, power products announcement. Um, so seeing these kind of evolve from automotive, also seeing the spread of Japanese investment through the state. So overall, once again, those relationships really play into, am I gonna feel comfortable doing business there? Does this state understand the needs that Japanese companies have? You know, are they, are they friendly to, to non-English speakers, non-native English speakers? Things like that make a big difference. And that legacy, that history, that understanding it, it plays out in conversations in 2022, just as it did in 1982, 1992. Those are the things that companies really want to understand to make that investment. Now, you've been uh, heavily involved in the Japanese uh, sector for, for years. Tell us a little bit about the, the relationship building, uh, the back and forth. Is, you know, We have the Southeast U.S. Uh, conference. Uh, which alternates between Japan and the Southeast uh, United States. Uh, but uh, what, what are the kinds of things that go into, from your perspective, uh, in economic development and international business, what are the things that go into relationship building? You know, I think most broadly, uh, something that the, the Japanese specifically are very good at is continuity of relationships. Americans and kind of in our industry are, are much more transient. We switch jobs a lot. We move from company to company. I think one thing that has helped Tennessee establish these relationships and hold on to these relationships is long-term consistency of kind of a point person. So while the top might change, there's been continuity at the state level with a John Gregory um, you know, the time that I was there, Lee Weiland's been involved in this forever. So you see a lot of these faces on the Japanese side. They may move, but they're moving up within a company. So we might have worked together with them years ago with a certain company in the secretariat office that was helping organize the Southeast U.S. Japan meeting. And then they ascend through the ranks of that company. So they've been to Tennessee early in their career as part of that meeting, or they've met people from Tennessee by being engaged in Seuss Japan, or by being involved in site selection for a company early in their career that decided to locate in Tennessee. And then they come back in another role to maybe lead that company years later at the facility in Tennessee. So I, I think where we've been really good and, and kind of one of those keys is continuity and understanding the value of keeping those relationships going. And we've seen, I think, through the Southeast U.S. Japan meeting, kind of specific to Japan, commitment from all of our governors and commissioners through Governor Alexander when this started through now to Governor Lee we still sit at the table and participate in the Southeast US Japan meeting. And it gives us an opportunity to have economic developers from around Tennessee 
in Japan every other year. I, I can tell you when you're working with a prospect, the first thing they ask is, well, have you ever been to Japan? So being able to have a reason to get people on the ground in Japan, to visit the parent company, to understand the culture, that does an immense amount of good. Um, and, and I think that's one of the true most valuable pieces of the Southeast US Japan meeting. And just relationship building in general is you've got to have kind of, you've got to go beyond the, is this just a great place for business to does this group of people understand me? Are they going to be my friend? Are they going to help me long term? And I think Tennessee has been really good at finding ways to be ambassadors and to be friends to the companies that are here. Now, tell us about the International Business Council and uh, feel free to make a pitch to recruit uh, uh, Japanese businesses and others who might be watching uh, this, this program. So through the International Business Council, the, the chamber has had a commitment to international business since the late 90s. So um, we really, at the Nashville Chamber, our leadership has valued what foreign direct investment brings to the Nashville region and, and to the state and, and really put their money and their resources behind building up those relationships. You know, Pat, every year, we count announced new jobs. That's kind of an economic development term. Those are the, the jobs that get created kind of through the economic development world. So there are other jobs like retail, uh, you know, a hospital job that gets created that we don't touch. So it doesn't get counted in those jobs. But out of the ones that kind of work their way through the economic development landscape, in our region, about 20% of those jobs every year are through foreign direct investment. Some years, Pat, that's as high as 40%. So it is a huge driver. It's, it is both new companies that come in that want to operate in the U.S. market and locate in Nashville, as well as companies that are already here, your Bridgestones, your Nissans that are adding jobs. But, but when you think about that, on average, 20% of the new jobs that get worked through the ED pipeline are foreign direct investment. It's a huge impact. And, and it is an area that, like I said, our leadership has realized that we've got to resource this. So, you know, I'm first point of contact for all the consular officials that work in our region that help build awareness of Nashville on a global stage. You know, I'm first point of contact for Nashville based companies that want to do business abroad. Uh, you know, I want anybody who's listening that might be thinking, hey, we might want to sell our product into X, Y and Z market. Call me. I can connect you to the right people. You know, my point of reference is to be kind of that jack of all trades, master of none. So inch deep, mile wide, I know a lot of people and I can get you hooked up to the subject matter expert that you need to talk to to be successful. Uh, so, so that's really what the chamber does. Through our International Business Council, we host events. We have conversations with consular officials. We partner with organizations like the Tennessee World Affairs Council to make sure that global awareness and the global impacts are understood by both the business community and also the general public. Uh, we live in an increasingly global community. And so just having that understanding and the ability to interact with high level officials that are, that are representing either our country or other countries is a benefit. Um, and we wanna help promote that type of knowledge in our community. We also have an International Business Council Advisory Board, and that group is about 30 um, industry leaders, and they include, uh, we've been lucky that our Consulate General of Japan uh, has allowed the Consul General to sit on that board since the Consulate moved here in 2008, and that's been a great opportunity for our business community to interact and better understand and build a personal relationship with the consulate um, and for the consulate to also better understand the needs of Nashville's international business community. So that's really been a win-win for us um, and, and really the location of the consulate, we can't underestimate the impact that that has on the expat community that's here, um, just on 
I think the way Nashville is viewed as, as really an important city, an important location for Japanese investment, if the Japanese government wants to have a consulate here. So, you know, that's that's all kind of a big piece of what I do with the chamber through the International Business Council in my everyday work. And, and I know you also work closely with the Japan American Society of Tennessee and, and they uh, provide uh, services to uh, expats and also uh, the cultural interaction and, and other projects and programs uh, to uh, enhance the, uh, the bilateral relationship. Well, that's, that's a, a great overview of the, the context and structure of how these things work, but let's talk about impact. Um, I know you, you look at Middle Tennessee and, and you probably have some numbers uh, about jobs and uh, capital investment and, and those kinds of things. But let's, so let's peel back the onion a little bit and talk about what, what does the Japanese investment, uh, you know, the early investment, the, the major manufacturing, the automotive, but now you talked about places like NTT Data, uh, international companies that are coming to Nashville and, and changing the skyline of downtown uh, and other areas around the middle Tennessee. But uh, if you were talking to, you know, you, you grew up in uh, Sparta and- uh, Smithville, and, and, you gotta get that right, Smithville. Oh, Smithville, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Smithville, Tennessee. Um, so you, you can appreciate what happens in a community around the state when investment comes uh, to an area that's that's hungry for economic development. So give us you know, case studies, anecdotes, uh, numbers, whatever you would like to share with Tennesseans and others about the, the impact of Japanese business. You know, Pat, I'll tell you just the, the initial impact. There are over 22,000 Middle Tennesseans uh, and when I say Middle Tennessee, we actually service kind of a smaller area of Middle Tennessee. We serve kind of the 10 counties that surround Nashville. There are 22,000 people that are employed because a Japanese-owned company decided to make an investment in Tennessee. So they're working in over 70 different companies. So when, when you think about just that, there are 22,000 people whose livelihoods are connected directly to Japanese investment in a 10 county region. I mean, that's a major impact. You mentioned Smithville. When you look at the map of Japanese investment across the state, I mean, I think there's maybe two or three counties in Tennessee out of all of our 95 counties that don't have Japanese investment. Smithville has a Japanese auto manufacturer that's located there. So they are invested all across Tennessee. So there's this economic connection that is undeniable. And when I talk about 22,000 jobs, to put some context once again for kind of our 10 county service area, if you add up, it's at least the next kind of four countries that are invested here, they're still not anywhere close to 22,000 jobs. So Japan is, it is such a large investor. Uh, I mean, it just, it, the others are, are, are further behind in where Japan is. We have a longer legacy, but just a, a lot more jobs and a lot more capital investment that's here through Japan than any other country. So this is this is on the ground um, prosperity for, for Tennesseans by virtue of the work that has been done in the past, uh, starting back with uh, Governor Alexander and extending uh, through all the governors and all the uh, commissioners at Tennessee ECD and, and all the international people at the, the chambers around the state. It's uh, in, in fact, um, what uh, is, is the source of prosperity for thousands of Tennesseans and, and 22,000 in middle Tennessee, uh, but many more uh, across the state. So that, that helps us understand uh, the impact. Now let's uh, let's talk uh, briefly about uh, where we are, where we're going. Uh, you probably have charts and whiteboards and all kinds of things with uh, names of companies and uh, who's coming to visit and uh, who you're pitching and uh, what's what's the outlook? We're you know we are 
uh, intensive in automotive, uh, but you've said uh, that there are other sectors that are moving in. Uh, tell us briefly about uh, your, your vision of the future, the possibilities for new Japanese investment, um, and what we can expect to see uh, in the horizon. We know there's a big boom in Nashville here. But uh, statewide, there's, it, uh, it, you know, we have fertile ground for more investment. You know, I, I think you're going to continue to see reinvestment in a lot of the companies that are here as our market continues to grow and as supply chains look to become closer to where the uh, they ultimately land up. Uh, I think you'll see some of our, our, our legacy companies and long-term companies looking at that and, and, and possibly adding jobs in the future. You know, I, I really can't say enough about how exciting it is from truly a Nashville perspective to see the NTT data announcement, to see, you know, Bridgestone and their corporate headquarters located here, to see Mitsubishi Motor Works moving their corporate headquarters to the Nashville region from California. And, and I think, you know, ultimately, I, I think, you know, Japan has been a long-term legacy investor in the United States. So my kind of thought leaning forward on this is you're going to see maybe from Japan, some of the more uh, corporate operations, some of the newer industries that have not invested. And I think we're going to see what we see for domestic companies, the Mitsubishis of the world that have been in California, that have been in New York, that have been in higher cost markets. I think we're going to see those evaluating where they are and locating some of their jobs, or if not their entire operations into uh, the South and into to the Nashville region specifically. Well, that's, uh, that's a, a promising uh, outlook, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to seeing uh, uh, some of those moves and uh, investments continue. Uh, we've been talking with Lori Odom. She is the Senior Vice President for Economic Development and International Business at the National Area Chamber of Commerce, and she also heads the International Business Council. Uh, Lori, any uh, final thoughts on the uh, impact of Japanese businesses in Tennessee, what, what it means to the state and, uh, and what uh, what's going on in your role? You know, Pat, I, I think in closing, I would just like to say from an international perspective, no country has made an impact on Tennessee's economic future like Japan has made over the last 40 years. So that investment, that friendship, that cultural connection, all of that is just so hard to measure. Uh, I, I know we talk about 73 companies, 22,000 jobs, but just the indirect impacts and, and how this has completely changed our economy, um, it, it just is hard to put into words. Well, uh, you did have no difficulty in putting those uh, into words in, in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, that was a great uh, background and context on uh, where we've come from and where we're going and, and the National Area Chamber of Commerce role in, in all this. And we thank you again. We're talking with uh, Lori Odom. She is Senior Vice President for Economic Development and International Business at the National Area Chamber of Commerce. And as she mentioned, if you're interested in doing business in Tennessee, call Lori Odom and look in our uh, details for her contact information. And I'm sure she will be glad to connect you to uh, business opportunities in Middle Tennessee um, and, uh, and help build your, your future. Lori, thank you so much. Thank you, Pat.